My guest is Vinny Schiavo, CEO of Device Lock. Vinny, welcome. Thanks, nice to be here. Vinny, Device Lock's tackling a pretty difficult problem, endpoint DLP, data leak prevention. Tell us how you go about that. Well, uh, we're a software company. We provide a, an endpoint DLP agent that goes on every endpoint. Uh, we work uh, together with Active Directory, and the, uh, the agent and the policy just gets pushed down when uh, an endpoint gets attached to the network. Uh, so that way, the the, use, the uh, admins are able to set policy and uh, enforce, you know, the policy for all the devices that are connected to the endpoint, and also any network borne threats as well. And do you? Um recognize when particular data is being exfiltrated or attempted to? Yes, uh, the, our product is content aware, so mm -hmm. we, we actually can set up policies that'll look for certain patterns in the data. And I mean, the usual suspects are things like social security numbers and credit card numbers, bank account numbers, but uh, the product also provides a tool for the uh, admin to, s to set up uh, custom filtering if, if you need that as well. One of the biggest problems to tackle is what do you do about additional things that people attach, so uh, portable drives, USB tokens, um, and there have been some huge breaches mm -hmm. where the insider offloads gigabytes of data to these things and walks out the door. How do, right. you, how do you help with that? Um, well, that's kind of our core business. That's how the company got its start in 1996 was to really lock down USB. Uh, but it wasn't too long after that that customers started asking for other uh, ports to be protected. Uh, in particular, when a cut, when an end user is malicious, they're you know the minute they see they're blocked in one avenue, they'll they'll try the next. Uh, but we do find today that most of the breaches are happening inadvertently by by end users that aren't real techni technically savvy, and they may uh, think that they're doing something innocent, but they actually end up taking all kinds of data outside of the company. Um, so we can block uh, the USB ports quite easily, uh, but also things like uh, FireWire and Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and even what you're allowed to print or where you're allowed to print and which d which printers in the building, uh, all of that can be controlled through our software. So no more downloading stuff to your iPod and taking it off with you? Correct. What do you do about, um, or do your customers have uh, network DLP solutions as well? Do they? Tend to work t well together. Yeah, sometimes the the larger customers will have the you know the gateway type products, but we're really focused on the endpoint. Right. In fact, that's kind of our tagline is that we we stop data leaks at the source, which is the person sitting at either a laptop or a desktop that's that's doing these things, either malicious or are just kind of bonehead things they don't realize what they're doing, and uh, we can stop those kinds of of uh, threats. What about locking down the data itself in case the whole device is stolen or goes out the door with the employee? Well, that's where encryption comes in. It's mm -hmm. really important that uh, you know part of your policy uh, for data leak prevention uh, includes your policies about what needs to be encrypted and what circumstances. And while we're not an encryption company per se, mm -hmm. we don't do the encryption, we work really well with the industry leading encryption products that are out there. So we can detect the level of encryption on a particular file and check that against policy and either allow or block based on you know whether if, if it's supposed to be encrypted, if it is encrypted and so forth. What are the biggest problems that customers come to you with, and how does Device Lock solve it better than the competition? I guess the, the biggest issue that we hear over and over again is just how complex some of the uh, DLP solutions are that are out there. Mm -hmm. Very expensive, very time consuming to get set up and working. Uh, so we focused a lot of our energy on developing our interface to work seamlessly with Active Directory. Um, and that seems to be being very well received by mm -hmm. our customer base. Uh, and what's interesting is that plays both on the low end, you know, the small, medium enterprise end of the market, and also the very large enterprise, uh, because on the low end it's appealing since it makes our product very easy to install, easy to use. You don't have to have rocket scientists to set this stuff up. You can use a, a Windows network administrator to set up the the product. Uh, so it's appealing on an SME SME end of the business. Mm -hmm. uh, but for large enterprise, it's appealing because it's massively scalable. If you can just plug right into the existing Active Directory infrastructure. It makes it very easy to set up, and it, you can have many, many thousands of endpoints. So there's no separate management council, and you suck from Active Directory and then push from there. Correct. Yeah. yeah. yeah now we, we do have a console, but we sure. don't really promote that. We really promote the fact that we work seamlessly with Active Directory. There are some cases where customers aren't using that still, but uh, for the most yep. part, our customers are using Active Directory. So within Active Directory, there's ability to set that granular policy. Yes. I mean, can uh, customers choose USB, because it's, in many cases, even in really secure environments, they use USB 
thumb drives to transfer data back and forth between clean and dirty sides. So can it, can you like whitelist USBs? Yes, you can. In fact, that's that's one of the powerful capabilities of the product. It's not just blocking mm -hmm. flat out. It's you can can uh, block based on a number of different criteria: who the person is, the time of day, uh, what groups they're a member of, all kinds of things uh, that you can mix and match to create a very granular policy. And then you can allow or disallow on, on that basis. And uh, as for the USB drives themselves. Um, we can recognize all the way down to the serial number of the drive, so that could be part of the policy too. You could, you could say you can't use USB drive at all unless it's this particular brand or type or model number or even this serial number that's assigned to you personally. Hmm. So I've never seen that in action because it's been a long time since I worked in an office. Uh, it, does it really encroach on the user's you know, freedom of action or do they get used to it pretty quickly? Well, I mean, it encroaches in that, you know, if, if, if prevent, it's intended to prevent the case where you have somebody who's not particularly te technically savvy and mm -hmm. they, let's say they find a USB stick on, in the parking lot on the way into the building and yep. they think, ooh, this is a four gig drive, I'll see what's on there, maybe erase it and use it, and they, they stick it in the drive and try to use it, and now they've just introduced malware into the network, right. and yeah. uh, there's, there's all kinds of risks. Plus, the guy that lost the drive may not have encrypted the drive and it may have something very important on it that's now out in the wild. So from that standpoint, yeah, I guess it encroaches on their ease of use because when they stick in an unrecognizable USB drive, it may block it and not allow it. But that's the intent of the software. Yeah. Now, what has the Department of Defense here in the U.S. done recently? Because at one point they, you know, they just said no more USB tokens, but mm -hmm. they're relaxing on that because they're starting to apply controls, right? Yeah, I mean, that's that's our single biggest customer mm -hmm. is the U.S. Department of Defense and, and various different branches of the military so are using our products. So Yankee Buckshot was a, was a good thing. <laughs> I guess for so. Your, for your product yeah, sales, and, yeah. and uh, also WikiLeaks is, you know, yeah. irritating as that was to all of us. It certainly drove the yeah. awareness of the need for this kind of product. Yeah, I think everybody's realized just how easy that was. Plus, yeah. I mean, there's countrywide cases uh, back in the day when they're just exfiltrating customer data off of with USB drives. Right. Um, a lot of banks have that issue a lot. Mm -hmm. So what's next for Device Lock as far as corporate growth, expansion, product expansion? Well, let's see, on the product side, um, you know, we have so many customers that we get lots of input about what they want to see next. So we have over 66,000 customers around the world. Um, and we're running on over 4 million endpoints. So you can imagine that gives us lots of customer input. Mm -hmm. um, Right now, one of the hot areas is, um, f especially for the very large deployments, uh, we run on Windows only today. Right. But we announced in December uh, a beta of a Macintosh uh, agent as well. So some of our bigger customers that have uh, you know a few thousand Macintoshes are anxious to deploy our product on those as well. So you'll see that very soon. Um, also, we've added a number of uh, new features for the network lock piece of our, our software, which is the, the piece of the software that protects uh, against uh, network-borne threats like Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus and Tumblr and those kinds of things. And we're adding more and more support on that side as well with the same kind of granularity. So for example, if, if somebody takes you know, office party pictures and they put them in a directory that they don't realize also happens to have secret product photos from some unannounced product and they post that whole folder to Facebook, uh, if your policy prevents that type of file or, or files from that location to be posted, it can it can mitigate that threat. And I suppose it's too early for um, iOS devices to need this endpoint control, right? Because they don't have a lot of. Well, I, d I think they do need it. Um, right. there, that's a, a real challenge for all the vendors that do what we do, because mm -hmm. as you probably know, Apple and also Google don't really publish. Um, a kernel level API for mm -hmm. developers like us where we can port directly what we're running today on the endpoint over to yeah. the mobile endpoints. Um, so that uh, causes us to have to come up with different ways of doing this. That's yeah. actually one of the other products that we'll be coming out with later this year. Oh, great. Yeah, because that's mm -hmm. the problem I see CISOs in particular complaining about a lot is, you know, they're bringing these devices into my network and they're connecting them right, usually exactly. wireless. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a key uh, new area for us because to this point we've really focused on the traditional endpoints, laptops, desktops, and servers. And as far as the mobile endpoints like an iPhone or an Android uh, are concerned, we can control what you can put on them as a USB drive, which is really a big issue. I mean, yeah. people bring in their iPhone, plug it onto the charger to charge it, but now you have a 32 gigabyte USB drive attached to the network, basically. Right. Yeah, that exactly. You can put whatever you want on there. Yep. 
Is there any oh. threat in this business from Microsoft since they um, have done a lot on the endpoint with configuration management and even antivirus now? Um, is there a threat that they'll come up with a you know clean and simple uh, device management solution as well? Well, I suppose there's always that threat. Yeah. Um, we're not privy to, to their plans in that regard, but it's been a long, long time they've been at this and they haven't yet, but yeah, yeah. I suppose that could happen, yeah. yeah. What's the biggest opportunity facing uh, a device lock in 2012? Well, the biggest opportunity by far is this, there's this huge uh, kind of hype cycle right now around the idea of bringing your own device. Right. That's sort yeah. of the buzzword of RSA, where we are yeah. this week here in San Francisco. All the, all the booths are talking about how they can help enable uh, enterprise accounts to allow their employees to bring their own device. Uh, and that's just, we're squarely in that space yeah. with what we do. Because right. right? as we talked about, one of the big issues is you bring your own iPhone in to work, you dock it, and now you can move anything you want onto that drive and leave the building. So that's a huge you know, marketing opportunity for us is to make sure people understand that we've been doing that a long, long time and we're one of the leaders in that space and we uh, have a very mature product that can, can help in that area. Yeah, and I think the um, just biting off the endpoint is an advantage because, like you said, the other solutions try and get everything, right? Mm -hmm. By the time you do network and discovery of data on your servers, uh, it gets expensive and complicated. Exactly. Whereas the first problem is the endpoint. Right. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank mm -hmm. you so much, Vinny. Okay, good. Thank you. It's good to be here.